Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am Mr. Photographer. Com. On One Software has released a new product, On One Portrait AI. Yes, they've jumped on the AI bandwagon, and they're not going to be the last company to do so. Um, going forward, you're going to see a lot of different software manufacturers come out with this so-called AI product. And ultimately, all this AI stuff is supposed to make our post-processing life a lot easier. And I think you'll find that On One Portrait AI definitely does that. Um, with just a few movements of sliders, you'll be able to do a complete portrait retouch very, very quickly. Now, in this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of On One Portrait AI. I'm not going to get into a lot of great detail. I'm going to save that for future videos. Later in the week, I'll do a future video or I'll do a video where I'll go into more detail about the product. Now, also, at the end of the video, I want to talk about some new things that are happening with On One Software. Specifically, they added a lot of enhancements to their mobile product. They're coming out with a new flagship product, On One Photo Raw 2021. It's available for pre-order. Again, I'll save that, all that to the end. So if you're not interested, you can just tune out at that time. Um, currently, On One Portrait AI is available and it's on sale. I'll have all that listed in the description below this video. And I just checked my discount code is working, so you could save another 20% off the sale price. I'll have that listed below. And they have a fully working free trial. So if it's something you're not sure you're going to use, definitely download the free trial and give it a go. Now, it works as a standalone product or as a plugin in Lightroom, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Corel, PaintShop Pro, Apple Photos, and soon it will work as a plugin in Capture One. Currently, it is not. Uh, you could just work on one photo at a time, or you could do batch processing of photos. It reads raw files and all the popular file types, including JPEG, TIFF, and so on. Now, I'm just going to open up one single photo in this, and we'll open up this one. And as soon as you open up an image in it, it actually does a tiny bit of processing to it, kind of a tiny bit of pre-processing to it. And I'll show you a before after, all right? Here's before, and there's after. Now, you may not have noticed anything, but look at her eyes. You'll see it more in her eyes. There's before, and there's after. So you could see that it definitely could see it in her eyes and it did smooth her skin a little bit. Now as far as the workspace is concerned, over on the left hand side we have a crop tool. We have a faces brush. Uh, if it didn't find the face for whatever reason, you could use that brush to touch it up. I've, I've done probably about a dozen different images in it, testing it out, and I found it to find the face every single time. That is kind of the AI feature. It finds the face, it finds the eyes, it finds the lips, the teeth finds the eyebrows, it finds all that automatically and then allows you to adjust all those independently of one another. It has a retouch eraser, so if there's a, like a stubborn blemish you need to get rid of, you could use do it manually with that eraser. And it has a zoom tool right there, a view tool. Now also it has some presets. You could see that it has children, female and male, so it breaks them down in those categories. And then when you click on one, it breaks it down by age. So you have 16 to 30, 31 to 49, 50 and older and so on. Now we're not going to use a preset in this demonstration. We'll just kind of show you what these sliders do. Now over on the right hand side, uh, you can see that it has a mask and it found the face uh, just fine. It has this master opacity slider. So if you need to dial it down, you could do that. Now it has different styles. Uh, by default, it uses default. Uh, it also has a legacy adjustment. You could do that if you want, or you could just turn everything off. Now, as I mentioned, it did some pre-processing, so it, the sliders are moved slightly. Now, it breaks down the different uh, things it does in sections, skin, face, eyes, and mouth. Now, of course, we'll start up with skin, and it has this master retouching slider. Uh, right now, it's at 50. Now, if I move it all the way up, you can see maybe that it retouched uh, her skin even more. There's before, and there's after. And if I bring it all the way down to same thing, right? So we'll leave it right at whatever it was, around 50. Now you could roll open this details expose triangle here and then you'll see everything is laid out, all the different sliders that it uses to retouch the skin. Also, it has two different methods. It will use either frequency separation by default or surface blur. Personally, I prefer frequency separation. That's a more advanced skin processing technique and I prefer to use that. 
So you could roll it open and if there's a blemish that you need to get rid of, you can move this to the right. If you want to bring some detail back into the pores of her face, you could move that to the right. Um, smoothing, if you need to smooth the skin even more, move that to the right. Um, texture, if you want to bring some texture back or add texture to the skin, you could do that. Remove shine with this uh, slider here. So all those sliders you could work uh, you know, to try to fine tune the adjustments you're doing. Now, then it has some face adjustments. We could add some brightness to her face. I like to do that. I like to brighten up the faces uh, of the subjects in my images. If you feel the need to slim someone's face, you could do that as well. Also, it has two different adjustments uh, to enlarge each of the eyes. Now, I like that it has those eye adjustments separated instead of one adjustment, one slider for both eyes. That's because very few of us actually have eyes that they are, are the exact same size. Most of us, one eye is a little larger than the other. And in some people, depending on how you have them posed and depending on what focal length lens you're using, you may find that one eye just looks way bigger than the other and it doesn't look right. So if that's the case, you then may want to enlarge the eye that is smaller. Um, if you feel the need to enlarge both eyes, you could do that, of course. Now, most often this will happen if someone isn't looking straight at the camera. They have their face turned and you're using a wide angle lens. And the eye that is closest to the camera will be larger than the eye that is further away from the camera. And it will be more noticeable with the wide angle lens. And if that eye is naturally larger, that's closer to the camera, then it's going to look maybe significantly larger in the photo. So you may want to adjust the eyes. Now, in this case, she's looking straight at the camera. But you could see that her left eye is slightly larger than her right eye. So if I felt the need, I could come in here and I could make her right eye larger just to better match the other eye. Um, but in this case, I wouldn't even do that. But you could do that if you want. Uh, you could whiten the whites of her eyes with this slider. You can see, you can make them freakishly white or just a little bit white. Uh, add more detail to her eyes. Make them look like marbles if you want. Uh, remove dark circles under the eyes. You could come in here and just kind of brighten those right up. See how it does that? Very naturally. Enhance her eyebrows. So you could bring those, make those a little darker. Then you have some oh, mouth adjustments. Uh, she's not showing her teeth. You could whiten teeth if she was. You could add more vibrance to her lips, brightness to her lips, change the hue of her lips if you wanted to do that. So then you could just, you know, very easily do this um, portrait retouch very quickly. Now, I just moved those sliders. I wasn't even paying attention, but I'll just give you a before after. There's before and there's after. All right, way overdone for me, but you get the idea. I'm just gonna cancel out of that, right? And we'll open another one just for another demonstration. Let's do this one. All right, this one I just chose because it could see her teeth. Now it's going to, it finds the faces and then it gives you the adjustments. It has the mask. Now it already did an adjustment. You could probably see it mostly in her eyes. Uh, there's before and there's after. A little bit of her skin. It did a little bit of everything, you know? But the reason why I just wanted to show you this portrait is she's showing her teeth. Her teeth are already really white. But again, you don't have to apply any mask or anything like that. It automatically knows where her teeth are and you could whiten them up or dim them down or whatever you need to do you could do that as well and lip vibrance things like that so that is that adjustment let me cancel out of that one and we're going to do one more just to show you real quick um this is a photo i really like uh the face to me is just a little bit dark so what i would do with uh this image is i would just brighten up the face like that and maybe i would just smooth her skin just a little more so I would come to smoothing, just smooth it just a little more. And there's before, after. So you could see that very quickly, man, you're done, right? So that is um, On One Portrait AI. Again, this was just an overview. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, post them below, and then I'll try to answer them in my next video that I do. I hope to do that video later in the week. We'll get into a little more detail. I'll try to get an image that has more than one person in it so that I could show you how you could uh, process the faces of everyone in an image or in a scene independently of one another. Um, now again, uh, they have a fully working free trial. I encourage you to download and try it out. I'll have all that linked below. Now what I wanted to talk about is the new stuff that they've announced. First of all, let's talk about this mobile stuff. 
A lot of people that work on mobile have been requesting a lot of uh, things uh, that uh, they've been rolling out continually. First of all, uh, On One has released significant updates to the On One Photo Raw mobile app, On One Photo Raw mobile for iOS, iPad I-O- iOS, or iPad OS, I guess it's called, and Android devices. They include powerful masking features for targeting specific adjustments and effects. The latest update also includes the On One Edge detecting perfect brush to use for precise masking while painting with just a finger. Each of the local adjustments uses On One's proprietary raw processing engine. The new masking tools also include support for Apple Pencil and Android Stylus. The new effects and filters include On One's very popular dynamic contrast filter, the gold standard for amazing clarity and detail. Additional new features include curves, HDR look, and glow to go along with the other built-in filters, including split tone, black and white, film grain, vignettes, color adjustments, and they say more are on the way. Um, it adds uh, new ways to search for images and things like that. So they've really uh, enhanced that. Now they've also announced that next month, October of 2020, they're going to come out with On One Photo Raw 2021. And that's down here. Uh, they announced it in this uh, press release. I have this press release link below as well. On One Photo Raw 2021 from top to bottom, we pack full of new features and performance enhancements. Key new features include the full integration of On One Portrait AI, which gives photographers an ultra fast and state of the art portrait retouching workflow. On One Portrait AI gets excellent results automatically with minimal effort. And it goes on. They're just selling it now. But you get the idea of all these new things they're coming out with. And again, I'll have all this linked in the description below this video. Again, uh, whatever your questions you may have about On One Portrait AI, post them below. I'll try to answer them in the next video I do. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.